please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. This is Bazaar Morning Call. Good morning everybody and welcome to Bazaar Morning Call with me as always. Uh, Anuj and Sonia. Well, uh, the market is going to be in the grip of many emotions and particularly of what this man said uh, that you just heard. Buffett said that he bought Apple shares, of course, 75 million of them. He also said that Berkshire Hathaway has bought so many shares that now their cash position is actually below $100 billion. So that actually spurred that huge rally on Wall Street. But uh, on the other side, there, there was a lot that bears probably in India should worry about. And among these are, of course, that uh, crude prices. Uh, although, of course, non-farm payrolls was a non-event, the uh, crude prices rising almost to $75 because of fears that uh, uh, the Iran nuclear deal will finally be cancelled. That's uh, certainly one point that's going to grip uh, an investor into India. But separately, the dollar index went to 92.9 and then receded, of course, to 92 and a half at this point in time. But that, that again, is usually a little bit anti-emerging markets. And finally, in India, there's another positive, and that is coming from the Reserve Bank, saying that it's going to buy 10,000 crore of bonds. The uh, market has been expecting for the longest time that the Reserve Bank has tried every weapon it can. The bonds haven't revived, and this is quite clearly the Brahmastra for the Reserve Bank, and therefore this should work. So that's a booster. But among all this, there is one tentative point also. What will ICICI do? So that's another big question mark. So today the market's uh, in the grip of so many emotions. Uh, I just can't make out which way it will go. Hi, Lata. Good morning. And last week, we saw the first weekly loss in the last six weeks. Oh, yeah. So there's been a bit of pressure, right, that the market is seeing. But there are plenty of other cues to watch. I mean, you spoke about ICICI Bank's results today. But this week is heavy on earnings. You have Aisha Motors, Asian Pain, Z Entertainment through the course of the week. Of course, those will decide the tenure of the market as well. And there's a Karnataka elections on the 12th of May. Absolutely. So this is the week ahead of the elections election. and the election results. So let's see how all of that plays out. And also on the 20th, 12th of May, there's that decision on the uh, U.S. sanctions against Iran. So uh, Brent now almost at $75 a barrel once again continues to be a spot of bother. So plenty of things to talk about this morning. Uh, Anuj, morning. Uh, as we head into the elections, mm -hmm. uh, do you get a sense that the market would sort of buy time just around this level, this 10,600 zone? Morning, Sonia. It's possible, but uh, you know, the, the way uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, rallies are picking up, uh, uh, you know, it's I mean, I could be wrong, uh, but it gives me something similar feeling to the last phase of UP election where, you know, he just went all in and we saw what happened with UP election. So, uh, till about two weeks back, I think the uh, view in the market was that uh, Karnataka election was perhaps uh, going Congress's way. I think that theory is changing a bit in the market. So, that I think is uh, going to be interesting and the market may well factor that in before the the actual number so let's see uh, that i think will be an interesting one and in that light i think if you look at friday i think it was a false breakdown for me and uh, false breakdown means that uh, you know you uh, take the weak hands out with the kind of mid cap underperformance the market breaking series low and then the market has the real rally so good chance of a short covering rally today if the friday low holds uh, and that is interesting because on friday you saw fis building fresh short positions via index futures and index puts. In fact, in index futures, there was 500 crores of selling and in this index options, there was 1100 crores of buying. Selling was in index futures and buying was in index put options. So there are there are now fresh shorts in the system and there's a good chance that if Friday low holds, then these shorts are forced uh, to cover. Uh, the bank Nifty has got its mojo back. Uh, and mm, since I get is that ICICI bank has priced in the worst. Uh, it's mm. got, you know, it's more made a bit of a double bottom. and any bit of positive news now on ICICI Bank could lead to a 5 to 10 percent rally in that stock. So that could mean the bank nifty does well. And while IT has corrected, it's corrected 6 percent now, it's very close to its 20 day moving average. And it's an index in a bull market, it's got a rupee tailwind behind it. So possible to see some bounce between 20 and 50 day moving average for IT index as well. So, uh, you know, my belief is that the market hasn't yet given a signal that it wants to resume its correction. As of now, this is still a buy on dips market and a lot of weak hands are out. So let's see, this could be the week where you had, you have perhaps one more breakout 
and the market decides to go higher. I think that theory is out of the window. If you start to break 10,600 and start to consistently trade below that, till that happens, I think the market's message is still that if you buy the dips, you make money. Well, there's at least two things positive. I mean, ICICI, if it behaves anything like access, mm -hmm. after the result, the stock went up 10% exactly. access. So yeah. it, if it is going to follow in those footsteps, the market should buy today ahead of the numbers. I guess the numbers are going to come late during market hours or after market hours. And the second thing, of course, is I think the Reserve Bank tailwind is very big mm -hmm. uh, for the market. So if cost of money, if, if a central bank is determined to bring down the cost of money to the extent it appears, to be at least that's how the market is reading it whatever the uh, reserve bank's uh, reasons for doing it may be altogether different but uh, that also can be a major tailwind so perhaps the bulls will have the upper hand for both these reasons so OMO and uh, uh, you know the ICICI uh, uh, stock following access footsteps okay well lots of cues to uh, reckon with this morning let's take a look at what our wise experts have to say as we kickstart trade this Monday morning Indrajit Bhati of Macquarie says with concerns on global trade play domestic cyclicals. Their top picks now include domestic cyclicals like LNT, ICICI Bank, Maruti, Shri Cement and NCC. He says they would generally stay away from mid caps due to valuation discomfort. All right, and today money market cues are important. Uh, Pramit Bhavabhata Veracity says the rupee on Friday finally closed below 6680. 6686 was when it closed. This suggests further weakness. He says a strong US dollar and higher crude prices continue to put pressure. He expects the USD INR to trade in a range of 66.50 to 67.20 for the day. So uh, 167, 20, 167 on the screen cannot be ignored, but much will depend on how the bonds do. Ajay Manglunia of Edelweiss expects the bond markets to open with a sharp positive gap up in response to the surprise open market operations purchases announced by the Reserve Bank. He says this move will provide some relief uh, to the beaten down sentiment. However, he adds the sustainability of the opening rally will be key and trajectory might turn choppy later in the session. He expressed the 10 year benchmark volume trade in the range of 7.6 to 7.7 .7 for the day. Okay, global queues are looking quite okay this morning. Here's Mangalam with the world view. Absolutely, a sea of green across the Wall Street, the Dow ending higher by about 300 points a percent and a half gain seen both on S&P 500 and NASDAQ led higher by Apple. The world is at the Warren Buffett uh, congregation, the Ber Berkshire Hathaway congregation, but Warren Buffett himself revealed that they bought 75 million more shares of Apple in the first quarter of 2018, which takes Berkshire Hathaway's holdings into Apple just uh, uh, below that 5% mark. So that led uh, the Apple stock higher. Apart from that, we got uh, uh, some cues come by from uh, the April jobs data that missed the estimates. But then again, the um, unemployment rate at 3.9% is at an 18-year low. So no complaints as far as that is concerned. US-China trade talks, they were on, but they ended with strong demands made without any conclusion because no deal and no date set for further, de uh, further talks was uh, was arrived at so that is something the street will keep an eye out on across the european indices we saw some green come by from the greens that we saw on wall street and in the european periphery the italian index that one really outperformed with a gain of over a percent and primarily because we saw seven and a half percent gains come by on ferrari that stock hit record high after a po uh, after a strong set of earnings and brokerages to upgraded that stock uh, in the emerging market space we're talking about oil closing in on that 75 dollars per barrel mark and an oil producer uh, country Russia that one outperformed with a gain of 1.6 percent in the Asian markets the queues are a fairly uh, mixed set because if you take a look at the Nikkei that one is slightly lower the Korean markets they're shut on account of Children's Day the SGX nifty for whatever it's worth right now indicating a start of close to 14 15 points in the green okay thank you very much for that uh, uh, SGX nifty indicating in the green it's not been a great indicator but uh, uh, today in the green, uh, we could take that with both hands. And one reason why that would be is because of the big relief for the bond markets. The Reserve Bank, as we have been saying for what, three times now uh, since the show began, uh, that, it, that it is going to buy 10,000 crore of Government of India securities. And uh, that, will, that purchase is happening on 17th of May. So it's two weeks away. There is an auction in between before that. What does all this mean for the bond market as well? Separately, the crude price and the dollar index going up. Samir Goel of Deutsche Bank joins us uh, to assess the impact of all this. Good morning, Samir. Thank you very much. Uh, well, first, uh, the immediate salvo from uh, the Reserve Bank. Uh, do you think that after all these weapons, this one will work and yields will fall? 
Good morning, Lata. I guess uh, we all hope it would. Uh, as you said, I think they've tried a bit in the recent past, including, I guess, all the changes, adjustments they've done to the FPI limits. But uh, I guess announcing an open market purchase is probably the most direct um, uh, sort of policy measure with relate, relation to uh, the technicals in the market, I suspect, uh, and to the extent that market would probably anticipate more of such open market purchases to be announced, I think you will probably see some bit of a relief here. But let's not uh, forget the significant headwinds in general uh, from the macro environment. Uh, we can see what's happening with emerging markets more broadly, uh, in particular in relation to sort of the dollar strength. And I think uh, that's going to continue to pose to be problems here for markets like India. I think near term, for sure, this should act as act as some relief. Okay, Samir, hi. Good morning. In fact, I was just going to come to that. The dollar index is now at, a, at its 2018 peak. I mean, just you know, touching 93. Do you see more pressure coming there? And what what could the ramifications be for India? Yeah, I think uh, look, the dollar index is posed at a pretty interesting level. Now, of course, after the NFP, uh, you've probably seen a little bit of a uh, sort of a pressure lower uh, in the dollar. I don't think it changes the broader picture uh, overall. I think we still are looking at uh, fundamentally a point where the market is still significantly underpricing what the terminal picture on the Fed trajectory would be. And to that extent, and uh, given that there seems to have been this re-correlation between rate differentials and uh, the currency and the dollar. Uh, I think we will probably see some bit more pressure higher up for the dollar uh, in the near term. And I think that will, especially given the key levels around which we are, and on, including on the treasuries at around uh, the 3% level, I think emerging markets will keep being under some bit of a pressure here. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Samira, I wanted to ask you even about the upcoming Karnataka pools. The rupee is usually sensitive to these things. If there were a, a BJP victory, do you think the rupee will be able to weather this much more easily, uh, the dollar strength? Uh, can you give us both scenarios, if there is a BJP victory and there isn't one? Yeah, I think I, I, I prefer not to go into necessarily uh, scenarios here, but what I would say is that, look, there are multiple factors going into the currency at this point in time, and I would argue... Uh, not just India specific, but obviously what's happening with the dollar environment overall and emerging markets. Now, to the extent that if it is a market friendly outcome and if uh, were equities to uh, like the outcome, and, and as we know, the currency is a lot more sensitive to what's happening with equity markets than necessarily fixed income uh, at, these, uh, at this stage. Uh, I think if there was to be a market friendly outcome, I think that helps, um, you know, INR being able to do, uh, to be able to weather some of the dollar strength. Uh, a little bit more successfully. I should point out that for all the weakness we have seen in INR, it is at best mid-beta to the bigger dollar move. If you take up a chart of all emerging market currency performance since uh, the dollar started to strengthen from around middle of uh, April, uh, India is at best uh, in the middle of the pack and probably slightly towards the better end of the pack, especially among its high-yield emerging market peers. So already the currency is doing relatively better than a lot of other EM. I think the problem still will remain. I think it will have to face, uh, the, you know, particularly the higher dollar trend and uh, were oil to continue to push higher towards $80. I think those will be the very significant headwinds. Now, of course, a market-friendly outcome on, uh, um, on, on sort of the political front will uh, certainly help buffer some of that uh, implication. Okay, so finally, before we let you go then, uh, your word on the yield, the, the range, I mean, how much do you think yields could fall in the very near term? Yeah, I think uh, it's hard to say in this as to how much would this be worth. I, I mean, uh, the initial expectation would be this would probably be worth about sort of 10 odd basis points. Uh, and particularly, I would imagine for the front end, I don't think the market gets <clears throat> immediately terribly enthused about picking up a lot of duration. But if you combine that together with the relaxation they have done on um, on, on FPI sort of limits for the front end, I would imagine the, the front to belly of the curve probably gets a little bit more relief as a result of this measure. But again, beyond that, uh, we cannot ignore the fact that we are still in global fixed income sort of at very key pivotal levels there. Okay, and uh, rupee, uh, say for the next two months or one month, what's the range? I think the pressure um, uh, for, to my mind, to the extent that I think the dollar will probably still be somewhat pressurized higher. Uh, and I think given the other headwinds which we have up ahead, I, I would imagine that we probably pressurize for dollar rupee more 
sort of more likely towards 67 rather than not. All right. Thank you very much, Samir Goel, for joining us uh, with all those uh, uh, guesses on the market and your analysis as well. So dollar headed higher and uh, bond yields headed lower. A positive combination clearly for the markets if the bond yields were to go to 7.6. Morning, uh, a lot of the Asian markets are trading in the green. I mean, flat with a bit of a positive bias. If you look at the screen, the SGX Nifty 2 is absolutely flat at this point in time. But there are plenty of stocks to look at. We have been facing a bit of heat at higher levels in our market. So let's see how things go. Uh, let's get our entire research team to tell us the list of stocks to watch. Anuj, what are you looking at today? So, Sonia, today first half could be really, uh, you know, market just meandering and buying time, I think. Uh, Perhaps in second half, uh, ICICI makes a move, so the market makes a move. But the two stocks, one is Power Grid, the big pickup in delivery volumes on uh, fr Friday, and the stock is trading at 200-day moving average. So let us see if there is a breakout on Power Grid. That's something I'll watch out for. And a stock in a bear market, and that's the problem with such stocks, granules. Uh, it made a fresh 52-week low on Friday. Aggressive selling in cash and f and This stock is down 27% this year, and the pharma index is down 8%, so underperforming. Uh, the underperforming index itself. Uh, so let's see how this one goes. Okay, well, uh, on ICICI Bank, I think the market will be on tenterhooks. As I just said, that uh, there was this wild rumor about uh, the video con coacher connection being discussed by the board, and uh, the street is deeply divided. All, all sides are rumors, actually. Uh, everyone claiming to have the best hearsay in town. But uh, if you go by the way uh, markets behaved after the access results, uh, my guess would be that uh, uh, ICICI should be in the green, if anything. But it's only a guess. I mean, it, this really could go anywhere. Okay, so clarity on the conflict of interest issue as well as any kind of succession plan of the board. Those are a couple of uh, things that the street is definitely looking out for. But let's move on. Avenue Supermarts was the big result that came in over the weekend. Uh, Mangalam, uh, looked like a good set this time? Looked like a good set, uh, Sonia. You know, the dream run for the company's financial performance continues. 22.5% revenue growth, EBITDA growth of 42%, and that's despite an increase in employee expenses by close to around 40%. Margins improved by 100 basis points uh, on a company that sells daily provisions and the net profit grew about 73% aided by lower finance costs and higher other income. Remember they had done an IPO last year so they have a lot of cash which aids their other income and they use that to pay their debt as well. So that is something which is a positive. The same store sales growth at 14.2% versus 21.2% has come in lower uh, uh, year on year. But remember the revenue growth of 22.5% and same store sales growth are optically lower. FMCG companies had reduced their prices by 8 to 9 percent so actually the revenue is much higher they added 14 stores this quarter valuations notwithstanding 68 times fi 20 earnings but the stock will still be in the green mm -hmm. okay mangalam uh, not too sure about uh, you know whether the stock will be in the green today because uh, had a big rally and if you see qu quarter on quarter uh, numbers uh, uh, obviously you can this, uh, yeah i mean and uh, half year eps uh, uh, com compare that to the kind of stock run that we've had, 92,000 crore market cap. Uh, perhaps other retail companies uh, could be better. Of course, just for the day, uh, otherwise remains the best in class. Uh, but Ekta, what about Sun Pharma? Well, Sun Pharma is in focus because uh, sources are telling me that their Panoli plant got inspected by the US FDA. Sources have also told me that it was a successful inspection and hence we could probably see the stock in the green on account of that. Thanks a lot for that. We'll come, keep coming back to you for more. There are many more pharmaceutical stocks in focus. But apart from that, NBFC's PSU banks will also be in focus today, Lata. Yeah, I think we've discussed it adequately. The Reserve Bank is buying bonds. Uh, bond prices will rise and obviously positive for PSU banks yeah. and uh, for NBFC's which borrow from the wholesale market. Okay, so that's something to watch out for. Let's go back to Ekta then. Some negative news on Lupin and Aurobindo. Well, for Lupin, um, Anuj, you know, my sources have told me that the Nagpur plant is going to get inspected today onwards from the US FDA. So that always comes with a little bit of uncertainty, not that important in terms of contribution to sales. But nonetheless, that uh, trepidation always remains. We don't have an official confirmation from the company still waiting to hear back. Separately, Credit Suisse has written on it and said, uh, written on Lupin and said that there is declining market share in uh, their key diabetes drugs, um, Fortimet as well as Clumetsa, and hence that 
that could probably weigh on the stock as well. Aurobindo, there are reports that they could be vying for uh, Novartis's generic business, which is $1.6 billion in terms of a bid. Such a big bid will raise concerns in terms of debt issues for Aurobindo and hence probably expect the stock to be in the red. You're also looking at Walkhart this morning. Post the numbers. Well, yes, I'm looking at Walkhart. Came out with numbers over on Friday evening and uh, the losses have continued despite the fact that the revenue growth has been 18%. The EBITDA loss has come down, but because of high finance costs, R&D costs that the company has been incurring, the loss uh, on a Q4 basis stood at around 154 odd crores versus 174 crores year on year. They've approved fundraising as well. Okay, uh, well, Sunal, uh, you have a bunch of other results that came over the weekend. I have more weak than uh, strong results. I'll start with Indocount, a weak set of numbers. Actually, the cotton price fluctuation in GST is what affected the numbers. The revenue went down by 13%, EBITDA down by 7%. Even the finance costs, they went up by 12%. Expect that stock to be in red today. Uh, Jay Prakash Par, well, uh, operationally, they performed well. The loss uh, contracted at 167 crores versus 229 crores last year. But for the first time, auditors have issued a modified report. And on the resolution plan, the company says that the lenders did not find the bids for the company acceptable and the resolution plan is still underway expect to read on that stock BSF weak set of numbers by uh, driven by both agricultural and chemical segment uh, revenue went up by 5% but the margins they uh, contracted by 200 basis points no sell very strong set of numbers the operating profit margins expanded by 1000 basis points even the profits were up 1.5 times and the company has also paid almost all of its debt in 2018 so expect that stock to be in green today as well all right thanks a lot for that well uh, today we've been talking a lot about ICICI bank and how it comes out with numbers apart from that many more interesting companies there's Xi, Tube Investment, Z Learn, uh, Tata Coffee, Talwalkars all coming out with earnings today. So a lot of non-index large caps coming out with their numbers. But uh, Anisha what are the other stocks you're looking at this morning? Well Sonia I'll start with PC Jewelers that refuses to be out of focus. The stock after the sharp decline was up 44% on Friday. Expect a bit of uptick today as well given the fact that board has advanced the meeting to consider buyback to May 10th versus May 25 early, uh, earlier. So maybe the volatility will end early. Uh, moving on to L&T wherein the company's wing which is IDPL has transferred 5 BOT assets, loss making BOT assets to uh, Invitrust. Uh, the valuation is small at 900 crores, but the brokerages like McQuarrie say it'll go a long way in improving ROE for the company. Moving on to India Bulls Real Estate, wherein Blackstone has acquired one of the commercial assets in Tamil Nadu for around 900 crores. NHPC, a good news coming because CRC has allowed them to continue with the interstate trading, so that should fill up the stock today. Moving on to Wellspun Corp, not that great news coming in for the company because they have got a demand order to uh, pay around 180 crores to the tax authority, so that might be in red. And lastly, Casey, a bit of sentimental downtick is what we might see because seven of its employees in Afghanistan have been kidnapped, uh, kidnapped by probably an, uh, a terrorist group. Back to you. Okay, thanks a lot for that. That's uh, some uh, troublesome updates over there. But uh, let's also talk about the power space a little bit in detail. Uh, Lata, you have more on that? Yeah, there's a power ministry meeting with uh, uh, RBI officials tomorrow. They are going to pressure the RBI for a lot of tweaks to the uh, February 12th circular. Now, so far, the Reserve Bank has stood pat. They just want that uh, overdue date, uh, you know, 30 days after the overdue date for resolution to kick in. Resolution process itself be given one year rather than six months. And then a few other tweaks as well. Uh, but the important point is the power stocks could be a little bit on the uh, front foot. Uh, all the GMRs and the REL powers and uh, the GVKs, uh, but uh, many of them are penny stocks. More importantly for the banks, it would be a temporary relief. But uh, I mean, going by the Reserve Bank's record, don't be too sure they will uh, give in. Okay, well, uh, we'll keep an eye out on that meeting. But for now, here's a quick recap of our top stocks. Expected to gain are names like Power Grid, ICICI Bank, Avenue Supermarts, HDFC, Bajaj Finance, India Bulls Housing, SBI, PNB, Bank of Baroda, Sun Pharma, Walkhart, PC Jewelers, LNT, India Bulls Real Estate, NHPC, No Sill, Intellect Design, and Nita Gelatin. All right, stocks under pressure could be. Granules India, Lupin, Aurobindo, uh, Pharma, JP Power, Wellspun Corp, KEC International, Indocount, BASF, Grady, Stern Shipping, and the Buck Nitrate.